Cobalt! Well, if that wasn't the most odd intro, I don't know what is. But today we are going to be working on a Chevy Cobalt. It is getting a couple of wheel bearings. Now, the customer supplied these wheel bearings. I have actually never used this company. High quality wheel hub bearing. <clears throat> That's uh, probably not true, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Made in China, ooh, great. So, first thing I noticed with this car, the tire is somewhat flat, but you know, it's only flat on the bottom. So, it's just the bottom, it's all good. It'll be fine as soon as you get moving. So that's no big deal. The power steering is a bit lacking. I definitely noticed that. I tried turning the wheel and as soon as I got like a turn and a half, it got stiff and then I was going back. And as soon as I got a little bit of a turn, it got stiff like it's running out of fluid. So it's maybe a little bit low. It doesn't whine though, like normally low fluid will whine. Let's go ahead and get started with putting these wheel bearings in the car. Obviously they are not gonna be installed in the hood. because Well, there, I'm done. Car's fixed, but you know what? Actually, wheel bearings aren't that bad to do on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the power steering out. If it's got electric, I won't be able to do anything, but if it has a fluid style power steering, which I can't see anything of. Oh, I can't see anything under here. Too much plastic. I haven't messed with the power steering on these cars much. So maybe, maybe it's just a bad rack. Who knows, I don't know. I haven't really looked into these much. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I bet this has the electric power steering that's underneath the dash, uh, just like the G6s did of this era. Um, so there's probably not much I can do about that. I don't see a power steering reservoir anyway, so let's just go ahead and get to the wheel bearing. Maybe I'll look into that later when, when we're off camera. You know, let's go ahead and unbox this El Cheapo wheel bearing. Let's take a look at what this product looks like, or lack of product, or who knows. Those of you unaware of shops and what shops do, how the hell is this box open? There we go. Uh, when, it, when it comes to bringing your own parts into a shop, many times shops frown big time upon that. The problem with the shops doing that is a lot of customers get kind of frustrated with that. And the reality is, if you're a shop and you do this for a customer, install their supplied parts, you're kind of at a benefit because now you don't have to warranty the, the labor to put it in if the part fails. So if you if you have the part fail within a week, which wheel bearings are pretty common to fail after, especially if the person doesn't properly torque this nut on the end, uh, there's a good chance it'll fail. How have you guys, there we go. You see them grooves in there? That's the magnetic pickup area for this thing. If you have that exposed like that, where dirt can get back there, uh, hopefully, hopefully the axle seals us up pretty good, but there's a good chance dirt will get in there, stick to that magnet, and, and mess up the sensor's reading ability after time. But the, the chances of this bearing even lasting that long in the first place, I don't know. It's, it's pretty lightweight. It's pretty chintzy. There's even an open air gaps surrounding it here. So <laughs> it's not exactly the highest quality product, but these things actually usually get stuck in the hub. Let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so I have no idea why we're replacing these wheel bearings yet. Let's go ahead and take a look quick, see if anything's loose and obvious. <clears throat> I don't see anything obvious there. I don't feel anything obvious. Let's go to the other side. Okay, let's take a look at this one. That one sounds like it's growling. So there might be one bad wheel bearing and that's why they're doing both, I'm not sure. I do notice the tires are completely hashed on the front of this car. I'm sure you guys uh, know that these Cobalts are well known for their extensively long, crazy, exotic burnouts. So that's normal. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just too much power for the car that's, that's causing all that, that flat tire action going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and inflate the tires, get realistic here. Let's inflate the tires, make sure the pressure's up, I'll zip it apart and you guys will be right back. So you can see I have the wheel off, obviously. There is the Tinnerman nuts on this brake rotor, which I find surprising. They're brand new, the brakes are recently done. Very, very few people actually put these Tinnerman nuts on. They're not exactly necessary, but they are what the factory comes with. I, I actually find that kind of a surprise. I did notice there's a sway bar link that's loose. That's not a big deal either. The strut is starting to leak a little bit. So just a couple things I noticed. But in order to get this wheel bearing off, we have to remove the brakes. 
And then we have to take the bolts off for that wheel bearing as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. First thing I need is to take the main bracket bolts off. It is unnecessary for me to take the caliper off of the bracket, then the bracket off the steering knuckle. All I have to do is take the bracket off the steering knuckle. It'll take everything off with it. And I'm gonna go grab a bungee cord as well because I wanna support this and not hang all the weight on the hose, though it usually doesn't cause a problem if you're cautious, but it's always good practice to hang that cow. I've removed the two bolts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing just a little bit of a tweak, an aggressive tweak. And the reason for doing that, see how that just came loose? All I did is I made it so that the caliper has collapsed a little bit, you know, gone in a little bit. That way this can come off of here nice and easy. And it's hanging on the hose a little bit, but this is reducing the weight here. Uh, you don't have to fully support it by the bungee cord. It's, it, it's perfectly fine the way it is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off now, get this out of the way. I need to remove these Tinnerman nuts. And since they're so nice and new and fresh, I really don't wanna damage them. I don't have replacements here because I don't put them on normally. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this pliers here, as you can see, to twist this thing out of place in hopes that I can actually take this off of here. I'm hoping I can backwards spin it. There we go. And just take it off. I'm gonna try and reuse these things, which is kind of odd, but. All right, I salvaged the Tinnerman nuts. Pull the rotor off. Now, the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat here is that's a new rotor, but they didn't clean this hub up, so that will warp the rotors. Another thing that I forgot to mention, when I pulled the lug nuts off, they were all way, way too tight. My impact gun was barely able to get them to come free. Uh, it took quite a bit to get them off of there. Uh, of course, I didn't record any video of it, but now I have to make sure I get everything else disconnected here. I have to take this plug off of here, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector, and then I have to squeeze this guy to pull that off of there, so that's free. Now we gotta remove this large axle nut, and then there are gonna be three bolts behind here, and I got the perfect tool to take that off. If you don't have a set of these, you're gonna wanna get a set. They're awesome to have. That nut came off way easier than the lug nuts did. Just for a little note as to how hard those lug nuts came off. Okay, so the tool of choice for this guy here are these Matco swivel sockets. They got kind of a unique design to them. I don't believe there's anything else available other than the Matco ones, but I'm not positive if they still have the patent or not. But these are the ones that I prefer. Any kind of swivel socket, impact swivel socket, works great for taking these nuts off because you can get the impact in there at any angle and then just zip them out of place. Now all too often, if you need to get at these bolts in the back, the axle is in the way. This one, it's kind of sort of in the way, but not too bad. Uh, in order to, to solve that, you want to take this and push it back. Now this particular one is not free. It's, it's in there pretty tight. Uh, I could probably hit it with a hammer and break it free, but it's much easier to get the eyes, ears, and air hammer out. And then you just use the point and you knock it in there. See how nice and quick that was, nice and easy. Now I'm gonna have much greater access to these bolts. Now this one in the very back here over by the tie rod end, I am not able to get at very good with the impact gun because the tie rod end, the sway bar link, and the sway bar itself are just in the way for the impact gun to get in there uh, without me turning this a whole bunch. But I don't want the steering wheel locked because I didn't leave the key in the unlocked position. However, I can get the swivel on there a little bit, but it's at quite the aggressive angle. It just doesn't have the torque. So I'm gonna take a wrench here. I'll throw a link for these below. Uh, these are extremely nice to have. And I will crack this thing free. There, now that that is loose, this should easily zip that thing out of there. Just like that. Once you have all these bolts loose, now is the time to get this wheel bearing out of here. But this is Minnesota. This is not Nevada or something where this thing's just gonna practically fall out. It's in there, it, it's stuck. So being that this thing is in there and stuck, 
Uh, there is a couple different ways to go about getting this thing to pop out of there. One of which is to leave a bolt threaded in partially, hit it from the backside. Sometimes that'll give. That's kind of hit or miss. Uh, Plus, you're swinging in areas where there's stuff hanging that you might cause an issue. I just don't like doing that method. The wheel bearing's getting replaced anyway, so usually what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and damage the wheel bearing. I grab the air hammer here, and I will take this air hammer, and I will attack the corner of this, trying to twist the wheel bearing. Now, some wheel bearings you can't do that with. These cars you can, it's no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Of course, eyes, ears. Okay, so you can see how I have twisted this wheel bearing. It's still tight. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is go from this angle with the air hammer to get it to free up a little bit. Oop. Don't get it stuck in the hole there though. So you can see it's obviously loose and it came out of there. Now, you can see this tone ring is visible and it's rotting. It's, it's pretty rusty. Uh, this toner ring is not supposed to be visible. In fact, it's bent right here. And that's probably from me twisting it out when I was using the air hammer. But you notice this tone ring is visible. That's because the magnetic pickup for this guy is still stuck in this hub. That's very, very common to happen. They get stuck in here. This aluminum corrodes. It swells against that, that sensor module or area. It swells against the hub. It causes everything to get seized tight and uh, hard to get out of there. So to address that, all you need to do is pry it out of there, really. I mean, it's, it's junk already. And now so is this player's. So I highly recommend you use the proper tool for the proper job, like prying. You should probably use a pry bar. It's usually pretty helpful. I'm just gonna go ahead and bust this thing out of here. Oh, this is gonna be kinda cool. I'm gonna show you guys something. So obviously pieces went flying, but check this out. This is what's inside this magnetic pickup for this thing. So you can see it's a, it's a wire winding going all the way around of this really fine copper wire, copper coated wire. And that's how they're able to measure for the sensor pickup. I didn't realize they had such a fine wire in these. That's kind of, a, or such a surrounding wire. I'm used to most sensors, they have the wire wound around, around a little rod and that rod picks up the, the wheel going by it and creates a magnetic field and then it, uh, you know, gives it the electricity so it can sense it. But this one actually goes all the way around, it looks like, which is different to me. So this actually looks kind of like, this looks just like the Chinese garbage in that box. So the GM stuff is pretty much using the same wheel bearing, it looks like. So now we have to address all this nasty going on in here. So I'm gonna take my whiz wheel and I have some sanders. I'm gonna take the sander and I'm gonna run it around inside here to make this hole opened up properly so it's not all corroded and gross. And then I'm gonna show you what I use for this surface because you don't wanna use a whiz wheel on this surface necessarily. It's uh, gonna distort it and that way when you torque the wheel bearing down on these three bolts here, it'll end up distorting if you get a little too aggressive with a whiz wheel on here. You either wanna do it really, really gentle or just don't do it at all. And uh, I'll show you what I use for that. All right, so the tool choice here for the inside of this is a fairly aggressive sanding wheel just because I wanna be speedy. I don't wanna sit there and waste my time going forever. Uh, this is also a blue, so it kinda of shreds itself as it gets used. That way it doesn't get gummed up. <laughs> You can see how this thing fell apart. They're not normally supposed to do that. I probably spun it a little bit too fast, but it actually worked to my advantage for cleaning this up. So I just let her buck and gave her all she had and uh, it got it nice and clean. Now I'm not worried about how even or uneven this is. If you make this a little bit goofy, it's no big deal because nothing is actually precision really to this except for that it kind of centers it, but the bolts do that as well. And if it's a little off by a millimeter or something, it's really not gonna make much of a difference. So now we have to clean this surface up. The perfect tool for that job is right here. And this is called a super scraper. I will uh, also link this, of course. But all you wanna do is just run this across the flats. Now this spot had to 
chunks of aluminum kind of sticking and bulged out, probably from me frying. Um, this thing is actually trimming that aluminum flat again. So that's what's nice about these super scrapers. If it is uneven, it'll fix that. As long as it's not a hole, if it's a, if it's a divot from you hitting it with a hammer or something. Like a lot of times when you're impacting this, you'll end up accidentally causing a little damage to this aluminum surface. And if you do that, this will kind of help you machine that flat to match the rest of it. And it really doesn't take long to clean things up with one of these. Uh, these things are pretty pretty awesome. They use, they're great for all kinds of things. All right, we have that surface as prepped as it needs to be. It's flat, but if we just bolt it on the way it is, we have exposed aluminum to exposed steel on the new wheel bearing, and that's not a good thing. You want to, at very least, put some grease, some anti-seize, something of that nature on there in order to prevent future corrosion. Uh, the stuff I use is this little tool crib. I'll throw a link below. It's available on Amazon. It's kind of spendy, but the fact that it's a spray adhesive for any technicians out there, it's awesome. It saves you a ton of time. Uh, very quick and easy to use. And the best part about this anti-seize is when you get it on yourself, it doesn't spread like normal anti-seize. You get a little bit on you, and next thing you know, it's all over you. It's everywhere, and you can't get rid of it. This stuff, it actually like just kind of sticks and doesn't go away. I mean, it, it doesn't spread. It stays where it is more, more than it spreads, which is kind of nice. So, with that phenomenal product, we will go ahead and get the wheel bearing in place. Though so obviously, this little thing gets tossed that was a perfect shot. Uh, and then the wheel bearing gets put in place, but this is important where this is located. There's an oblong section on this car that's bigger than the rest of the circle. You wanna make sure you put it in with that facing that, otherwise you will end up busting this off trying to push it through there. Of course, you have to feed the wire through first. Oh, 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 I forgot something. I forgot to put this pointless thing on sits there like a so. And honestly, it's it's pointless as far as I'm concerned. I will go ahead and put it on there, but you see this little ding here, that will cause an issue. I must have hit that with the air hammer somehow. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this thing up quick on my sander, and then I will spray this with the anti-seize as well. Okay, so you can see I have cleaned it up some. Now all I did is I very lightly took it to my belt sander. I have one of those uh, tabletop belt sanders and it's a 180 grit sandpaper that's worn out, so it's not very aggressive. I just took it, set it on there, touched it a couple times, set it this way, touched it a couple times, just enough to get the surface halfway flat. And uh, I'm trying to not take much material off because I don't want to distort it. Now this area I was unable to hit, so what I'm gonna do is take the super scraper and just kinda go over it like this. That way I get rid of any little high chunks of that paint that is on there, and that should be good enough. Now we'll go ahead and do this again. You can actually see that oblong part of the hole right there where that sensor goes. So that has a line up too. We're gonna go ahead, set this guy up here, feed the sensor through. And this sensor has a different style clip, but I think it'll still work on this design. Okay, so you can see this one has a metal tang on here instead of the plastic clip, but all you have to do is slide it over here like this. It'll still snap and grab a hold of that, and you can still plug it in all the same. Plugged in, ready to go there. Now I can go ahead and get these bolts in, but before I do that, depending on how rusty these are, these ones are actually really clean yet. Uh, you may or may not have to clean these up. And then of course, you always wanna take and put a little Loctite on here. Now, this Loctite on these bolts, the purpose for this is not to Loctite the bolts. The purpose for the Loctite is to seal the bolts. What Loctite actually does in a lot of circumstances when it comes to brake hardware, things like that, it allows you to take it apart later, believe it or not. It doesn't make it so it's harder to take apart, it makes it so it's easier because it'll prevent rust from getting in. This acts as a sealer. As soon as it dries, it keeps the water from entering those threaded areas. And you notice I put it on the head here. That's to make that seal as well. So I do it for sealing more than I do it to lock it up. And that's also the reason it's blue Loctite, not the high strength red, because there's no reason to use the red in this kind of an application. 
Now, when I put the impact gun on those bolts, I did not reef them on. All I did was walk them down. I'm gonna use a torque wrench to torque these bolts to make sure they're even so they apply even stress to these flanges. If one is torqued at 130 foot-pounds and another one's torqued at 20 foot-pounds, it's gonna create a distortion factor on the wheel bearing on the inside because it'll distort the material that is holding the cage of the bearings and the bearings will wear out prematurely. You have to have them evenly torqued. Look up specs per your vehicle, per your application, uh, and make sure you apply them properly. Now you see I left this nut off here. That's so I can push this away so I can fit the head of the ratchet in there for the torque. And uh, this one has enough clearance. Some vehicles you can't do that and you have to put an extension on it. And when that's the case, you have to try and be sure that you're not making the extension and the swivel flex too much because if it flexes too much, your torque will be off. Now when putting this nut on, the manufacturer recommends not using an impact. They're afraid that this thing's gonna separate a little and cause an issue. My personal belief, now this is my personal belief, not what they say, I don't think that's necessary. I think you can zip this down with an impact. Don't reef it on with the impact, but at least to walk it down because this thing, well, in fact, once it gets there to the end of the threads here, this is a squished nut, so it's a locking nut, and you're not gonna be able to turn this by hand easily, so you'll sit there and you'll ratchet for quite a while. It's not very fun, and that is why I'm okay with doing this. There, you see how it stopped? Now I'm gonna back it off just a little bit, just to make sure it's nice and loose, and then I will do the final torque on this. My favorite place to look for bearing torque specifications, I just type in SKF bearing torque in Google, it pops up with a PDF, and this is what the PDF first page looks like. And obviously I'm using my cell phone, so it's gonna look different if you're on a PC, but they give you per vehicle, you know, they give you all your little individual info on here, see if I can get to the top. There we go, so that's Acura, obviously I'm zoomed way in for the camera. There's Acura and so forth. So they just go down the line to all the different manufacturers and you can look up your particular vehicle, even if it's a Cobalt, in order to find your specifications. So Chevrolet, let's see here, Cobalt. This one has a torque spec of whatever that just told me. But I'm not gonna tell you guys that because I want you to look it up for yourself to make sure that you get it right for your application. Now when torquing these down, obviously I'm not gonna be able to torque it like this. It'll just spin freely. So you have to have something like a pry bar here to hold this in place. All right, now we wanna spray this down before we put the rotor on. You can see I like this stuff. And what I'm gonna do before I even put this rotor down in place is this side's not too bad actually. It, uh, well, it's got a little bit. Maybe I'll do it there too. But I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and use this to scrape the inside of this just real quick. Throw safety glasses on. These things will throw rust pieces everywhere when you use them. Now we have that there. And the nice thing about Tinnerman nuts and they are actually kind of nice if you put them on, only for one reason. Now the rotor actually holds itself in place, which is a nice little feature to have. But I don't know, I just don't buy the darn things. There's a few different sizes and I just don't want to deal with them, so I don't get them myself. So let's go ahead, put this guy in place. And as I'm putting this in place, we are gonna explain the final steps here. So I will be spraying this before I put the wheel on. And unlike the previous person uh, who just did the brakes, we are gonna put a little Loctite on these bolts. And of course, then I will put the wheel on and this side will be done and I will be going on to the other side. So if you have any questions, be sure to throw some questions down below for me. I have no problem answering questions. Uh, it may or may not take me a while to get to them. Usually I'm pretty responsive. 
if you feel a need to help support my channel so I can continue providing this content, be sure to check out the description and scroll all the way down to the bottom, as well as any items that you might want to purchase from Amazon. I am on their associate program, so that helps me greatly too. And with that, hopefully this video was helpful to you. So please like, share, subscribe, or dislike. It doesn't matter because the algorithm don't care. And I will see you guys on the next episode of whatever I decide to bring you. Don't forget to take your bungee cord off, by the way. I've acquired quite a few bungee cords over the years from people leaving these things in place.